Hello, hello. This is Tabitha and I'm here with your Wednesday art snack. Snack, snack, snack. Um, we're talking about lines this month, if you're watching this in October of 2020. Um, lines and shape. And right now I want to talk about how to paint a thin line. This is a uh, an issue that vexes many beginning painters and many not so beginning painters, um, but especially beginners because it really takes a lot of practice. You just really need to practice, practice, practice um, doing this. So I have here, um, this is my art journal, which is a mixed media book. If you don't have one, I recommend you get one um, because it's great for keeping, uh, not just for doing art, but you can also do some color charts in here, all of your exercises. You can use this as a reference. Um, and you can see, and this is just a kind of a scattered mess I was practicing yesterday. Um, but I wrote down which brush, brushes made which lines. So it's kind of good to have this as a reference um, if you haven't painted a ton so that you can remember which brush worked best for you for which thing. So we're not talking about um, brush strokes uh, outside of thin lines today. That's a whole different topic. I'm going to encourage you to do an exercise of just loads of thin lines and seeing how thin you can get those lines. So we're doing this, uh, I'm doing this on paper today. If you do it on paper, this is mixed media paper. Uh, so it's not gonna buckle, it's gonna hold up to the paint pretty well. Um, but if you do it on paper, I'm going to also encourage you to do it on canvas because uh, the surface matters. Uh, it sort of will give you a different uh, effect. So you might practice on paper and go, oh yeah, this is easy. And then get to canvas and say, oh, it's not so easy or vice versa. So it's good to practice with different surfaces, different substrates. All right, so the first thing um, about painting thin lines is the brush you use matters, which you know may seem like a given, but I can tell you I've seen a lot of people try and paint thin lines with really big brushes. So these brushes don't even seem that small, except for maybe this one. And certainly you can get much smaller brushes and I actually have much smaller brushes, but you don't really necessarily need to. The main thing is that it needs to be able to get a thin edge on it. So this is an angled brush and I got it wet and look at that, look how thin that gets. So this is a very versatile brush because I can make thin lines with that edge and then I can go wider with it if I want. So that's the angled brush. Here is a flat brush, a plain old regular small flat brush, very much like the angled brush without the point on it. And this is a round brush and see that thin point you can get with this, it's really great. And then we've got a good old fan brush. So I'm gonna demonstrate all these, but use what you've got. So I'm gonna say, look at your brushes and grab brushes that look like they can make a really fine line. For instance, this brush, this is great for covering big areas, but it's not gonna make such a fine line because look how thick and fluffy that is. It's not gonna work quite as well. This brush may be a little better, but if I get it wet, yeah, I can get somewhat skinny, but not incredibly skinny. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna start with the angled brush. I'm gonna get it wet and dab it off on my paper towel. So getting a thin line, um, there are three things you need to think about. And the first one is the kind of brush, obviously. 
the second one is how much water and paint you get on it or medium and paint. It doesn't have to be water. You could, might be using a different medium, um, which is another subject. And how much pressure you put on it is really important. So I want, um, for this, I'm using acrylics and I want a little bit of water on there. I don't want a ton because I don't want it to run. I'm a poet. So I'll just dab it off on my paper towel. And I'm gonna come over here into this big pile of black paint and just get a little bit on there. When you're working with fine details, you don't want a whole lot of paint. Now I can see this, I have a stray bristle. Hopefully that's not gonna mess me up. If so, I will just take a scissors and chop it right off. All right, so I've got this angled brush, which by the way, I recommend you get one. They are pretty awesome. And I'm gonna put the point down and it can be in whatever direction is comfortable for you and depending on what you've got. And I'm just going to set the brush down and pull across the page. Set it down, no pressure, meaning I'm not putting any pressure on this. I'm letting the brush do the work. I'm setting it down and I'm pulling. Now I'm going to try and put even less pressure on there. I'm gonna try and pull it up. And by the way, you can set your pinky down. You can hold it like a pencil. Um, there, you might hear artists uh, and teachers say to hold your brush way back at the edge, which is great for some methods of painting. For this, when we're getting really detailed, especially when you're just learning, um, I recommend just holding it close to, to the point, just like a pencil. And you can rest your pinky if you don't have wet paint over here and use it as a guide and it will stable your, stabilize your hand. And I'm so sorry, my camera keeps going in and out of focus. That is really annoying. Um, so I'm just going to lighten up, think about barely touching, barely touching, say even skipped. The lighter the pressure, the thinner the line. So next, I'm gonna press hard and see how thick that can go. Now watch this, I'm gonna wipe off my brush, give it a rinse, wipe it off again and start fresh. And I'm doing that because acrylics really can dry up on your brush, especially in a dry climate like I've got here in Colorado. So you need to clean your brush often, especially when you're working with detailed stuff. Loaded it up again, which is not much, didn't get much paint on there at all. And now I'm gonna go light, press harder, and go light, press harder. So do some of these with whatever brush you've got and see what happens. And with the angle brush, you can turn it around and use that point. See what happens when you just paint with that point. Do some curved lines. Now, what's fun, and again, I don't wanna get into too many brush strokes. I just wanna mainly stick to thin lines, but I will show you this. I'm just going to put this brush down here, not pushing on it again, but I'm wiggling it back and forth and getting that groovy ribbon like line. And again, letting the brush do all of the work. And while I'm doing this, I'm moving my uh, shoulder or my elbow at least. You can sort of see me in the, in the corner up there. Hopefully you can, moving my elbow, not my wrist. I'm not doing this. You can, but it's really good to get into the habit of pulling from the shoulder. So do some, try and get as skinny as you can and then put some pressure and see what it does and get skinny again. And just do a whole bunch of these. This is great to do while you're watching TV. 
you don't have to focus on it a lot, but it will add to your, um, call it brush mileage, right? Your brush experience. The more you do this, the better you get. Painting is just a skill like anything else. Um, nobody's born knowing how to use a brush. All right, so that's the angled brush. Just going to rinse that off. Actually, maybe I'll just set it in my water so it doesn't dry out. Okay, next I'm going to use this square brush. I'm gonna get it wet again. And dip it in some paint. And same thing. Thin line, see how thin you can get it. I'm using my whole upper body in this actually, I'm sort of going forward and pulling back with my body. See what happens when you go skinny, press harder, go skinny. I should say, go light. <laughs> you go light and you get skinny. Uh, sounds like a diet ad, but that's, <laughs> that's the way it is. Um, and start to do some, you can practice with some short brush strokes too. And you can do that with the other brush, whatever brushes you have. And, and my camera just went out. My camera didn't go out. A black screen appeared in front of my monitor. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Okay. Um, so notice what I'm doing here. If I don't feel, if it's not, if the paint is not going on like I'm expecting, i.e. it's getting too thick, I will just wipe off my brush a little bit, get a little water, adjust the paint to water ratio. And you might have to do this a lot just to um, understand it and, and see what you're getting. You know, you might have to fail a little bit uh, to see how to do this to get firsthand experience. But try flicking. Try doing some patches of grass. So I'm really, I'm using this brush. I'm, uh, it's perpendicular to the page and I'm starting at the bottom and just flicking up. And I know you can't see that. Let's see if I can do it from the side. It's thick, but see how it's thicker when I do it from the side, whereas if I do it straight up and down where you can't see it, it gets a little thinner. So try that too, practice with that. Try painting from the side and painting straight up and down and see how your brush strokes, uh, your marks change. And do some squiggles, do whatever you feel like, but just practice. The main thing is to practice getting these thin lines down. It will really help you in your practice to be able to do these. And think about where you might use these lines, grasses, tree branches. Nature scenes, cityscapes even. It's just really nice to be able to make a thin line. All right, so I'm gonna set that brush in my water and I'm gonna move on to this round brush. Now the brown brush is really a great brush to have. It's, it takes a little bit to master sometimes, um, but it's really versatile and I'll talk about all the other things you can do with it another time. This honestly, look at this, Monet. I got this at the Denver Art Museum. It is a cheap brush, cheap art museum brush, and I love it. So I'm just gonna get it wet now, when you use one of these guys, put it in your palette and spin it around like this, if you can see that, so that you can keep that point on there. And now practice some of those brush strokes. Now that's it. Okay, so no pressure at all, still making that 
kind of a wide stroke. So if I consciously lighten up on the pressure, you see nothing, oh, there we go. I had to turn it a little bit. I can get a thinner line, but just the weight of the brush on it is making the line that much thicker. So lots of pressure, little pressure, lots of pressure, little pressure. And if you start getting, uh, seeing the canvas or paper through, you're getting a dry brush. So you either need to just add more water to activate the paint that's on the brush or get more paint on there. So do some doodles, try and use, if you have a round brush, try just using the tip of the brush and see what happens. Try signing your name. It's a really wonderful brush. And again, if you put the brush down and flick it up, pressure at the bottom of the brush stroke and lighten up at the top, you can get some grasses. Give it a go. Now, if you like to come to classes, if you practice this stuff in between classes, and then you can show up with more confidence and it'll be easier and you won't feel quite so pressured. All right, the last brush I wanna demonstrate is this fan brush, and this is a nylon fan brush. I also have, I call these beefy, fan brushes and I, I use them for different things. I don't use this one for thin lines, but this one I do. And I don't like to get these wet um, at first because the bristles tend to separate if, if they get too wet. So I'm just gonna dip the tips of this brush into my paint. You can see it's sort of starting to separate already. And I'm just going to set this down straight onto the page. So I'm not getting a very fine line, but I'm getting a bunch of fine lines. So this is kind of a really groovy brush um, to play with. So the upside is that if you do something you like with this brush. And here I'm using not the thin side, but the broad side. And I'm just going to flick up like this. If you get something you like, you don't have one good line, you've got 50 good lines or 100 good lines or something. The downside, if you do this and whoops, you get a line you don't like, then you've got 50 or 100 lines you don't like. So um, keep that in mind. But it's super, super fun to play with. And you can do, let's see, some really fun sort of abstract grasses and I don't want to again I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of telling you all the great things you can do with a fan brush so I'm not going to do that um, but I will scrub in a little bit of ground there could even be mossy water I don't know but there's the fan brush now, really quickly, I just also want to demonstrate a palette knife because this is great for making lines in the right situation. So this is um, sort of a long diamond shape, uh, long on the top edges, diamond shape palette knife. These things are wonderful. They're great for mixing paint, great for applying paint. Uh, here, I'm just going to get the edge. I'm turning it sideways and I'm just getting some paint on one edge. And I'm just going to slice it. Ooh, 
That was cool. And again, I'm using my whole arm. I'm moving my elbow. Get your body involved when you're painting, not just your hand. So there are some really cool things you can do with this. This I would probably use in a more abstract painting than a real realism, but uh, you could certainly do some some things in a in a landscape. I thought I had a an abstract composition in there with that, but I don't. Okay, so the final thing I would suggest you do is take these brushes. First of all, it's really good to learn your brushes. So you can Google common brushes and, and see what you've got. This uh, is a flat, sometimes they're called brights, uh, depending on the length of the bristles, um, but it's definitely a flat brush. And I suggest take some paint on the edge of the brush and find the marks you made with your flat brush, which I've lost track at this point. Um, but write, try writing with it. Try writing the name of the brush and maybe taking the brush strokes that you did and putting them in a box. Now I know these weren't all my flat brush strokes, but do as I say, not as I do, right? And then the round. And this one uh, is super sensitive to pressure. So once you can ma um, manage the pressure, you are golden with this guy. Round. It's a roundish shape. <laughs> All right, this is not the prettiest, um, but it's just for fun and demonstration. And you could certainly make yours more pretty if you wanted to, but you get the idea. Um, somewhere in there, there's an angled brush. This is all good practice. That was, I wrote Angie, that wasn't Angie, angle. This is all super good practice for you. So, Take a couple of pages in a in a journal. You can even use any old paper to do this, but you know, thinner paper will buckle. Try it on a canvas. Just practice, 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 practice while you're watching TV, practice while you're on the phone, while you're hanging out. Um, get your small brushes, get some water, get some paint, and just experiment. That's the best thing you can do. And it's fun to experiment, especially if you're doing loop-de-loops -loops like this. I really enjoy that. Um, that's it. There's your Wednesday art snack. Have fun and I will see you soon. Bye.